It's going to be another scorcher of a day, but I thought it was about time we had a bit of an update on the garden farm. And also stick around, I might give you a sneak peek into some of the other projects we've got going on later in the video. Now first up, if you haven't seen the build of the garden veg bed project already, I'll leave that a link at the end. It's basically a raised bed design inspired by pizza. It's quite a fun video and uh, that'll give you a bit of a background to what we've got going on here. But let's take a look how things are growing. First up, you'll have to excuse the mess behind me. Ever since we moved the poly tunnel and the shed, things have laid kind of stacked against that wall for now. We'll start on this bed and at the same time, I'll kind of cut things back and uh, we'll launch them into the chicken run. But the, the this first bed had uh, lettuce in it. It's got chives and red basil and it had some fat choy down both sides and the pak choy is what's kind of gone to seed and we use quite a lot down this side but this red pak choy just didn't uh, didn't last as much as the others. Um, there's also a little volunteer potato or two that seem to have come from nowhere um, but you know sometimes when things sprout up it's quite fun to just leave them and get your bonus crop. Anyway plenty of space there to to replant and again, this, this red salad bowl lettuce is one of our biggest croppers when we always plant quite a lot of that. Now this one already looks a bit of a mess uh, and it's already had three, three cycles in it within six weeks. Um, it started out just being all the leaves and the lettuce was, was the first triangle we planted. The reason for all the deep um, wood chip there is just because that's what's gonna go around to the end. So uh, it will be back down at path level soon. But in here, I've ended up clearing out all the lettuce that had, we'd used. Uh, it's still got <laughs> another load of this red salad bowl in the middle. Um, but we planted all of our strawberry plants in here. And these are small plug plants, which won't really crop properly until next year. But there's quite a few, and I've got a few more to transplant into here. And I think this will remain a permanent strawberry and soft fruit type bed. And what I'll do then is build a triangular cage that will kind of sit over the top of this um, and that will keep things free from birds because they literally wait until the last day when they're perfect. Now bed number three here uh, really does need a clear out. We've harvested quite a bit from it already and we're down now to our last little row of spinach here and we use a lot of spinach as salad leaves and also um, for cooking when it gets a bit bigger. And then when it gets to this sort of leggy size and it kind of starts going to seed, then it is just ultimate chicken fodder. They absolutely love it. There's still a few sunflowers from the, of the girls in there, which never got planted out. But um, if we move them out of the way, these carrots will be glad to have a bit more sunlight now. That's all spinach is gone. Again, more of the infamous red salad bowl at the front. That's uh, a more recent uh, batch, so that's kind of younger, younger leaves. Then we're on to this, which is the other main lettuce we grow, which is the all year round lettuce. This is quite a tight, really tightly sewn row, so I actually need to go through and thin them out, but rather than just thin them out uh, and use them up straight away, I can probably get away with thinning them out and replanting some of them to give them a bit more space and then they really head up. When they're at this size, you can just take the outer leaves. A lot of the lettuce that we grow, I don't really harvest as a whole head, and I just simply take the outer leaves, and I'll show you that on the baby gem row in a second. And then we're on to this row of, uh, I can't remember the, the name of them, stubby carrots, let's call them, um, which will be now pretty glad to see the light. And they're a really tightly packed bunch in there. So they're the sort of ones you can just thin out, but they really are these short, stubby little characters. Not much good for anything but novelty. They're not even kind of chantonnay sort of short carrots. They're literally dumplings. They're quite good. You could drop them in stews and stuff, but being that it's the middle of summer, they're not really doing many stews. And then volunteer chard in the back there. And there's also some herbs that need to be planted out. This was just spare bed space. So there's chives and um, what have we got in there? Some thyme, some sage, 
sage kind of takes over. It's a lovely plant, but it kind of goes a bit bonkers. And then some more strawberry plug plants, which are kind of just surviving in there for now. This bed's probably my favorite at the moment because it's the most organized. It starts with flat leaf past at the front, which kind of leaves leave that to itself. Um, then we're onto this mix here, which is uh, like a pick and come again type mix. Uh, it's called Musclan, I think it is. It's a really nice mix, quite kind of subtle flavors. So the kids just chomp through all that. It's not like, um, uh, it's not like Mizuna or Rocket. There's nothing too peppery in there. Again, we've got spinach, which is time to come out, which will give a load more light to everything behind it. But one thing it was giving is shade to the shallots here, which are bound to go to seed if we're not careful. Um, you know, at the moment, they're looking great. So I don't really want them to dry out. So the, this row of baby gem, uh, it look, may look like a small, insignificant row, but it's amazing what you can get off small amounts of uh, growing space. And all of these, uh, they're the red little gems. And we just simply each day go along and take what we need. And rather than harvesting the whole head, we just take the outer leaves. And that's why they start going taller and taller and look like they've got the seed, but actually they're still tender, sweet leaves. So we just take them off and it, um, it just makes everything last a little bit longer. And you also end up keeping the leaves away from the soil that way so you get less kind of slug issues but anyway that's, it works for us it would appear i just unearthed a caterpillar farm in amongst those spinach leaves so let's pick those out that can be chicken breakfast and then moving right to the back we're on to the monge too which is pretty much ready to start picking now All right, bed number five is looking a bit wild. This rocket here is, the, believe it or not, the batch from last year. And we transplanted it twice and it's still been okay, but now it's finally gone. Then in behind there, we've got all the rainbow chard. We use that as small leaves for salad and now it's at a size where it's perfect for cooking. You can see all the more colorful stems in there, yellow, red at the end. In behind there, there's a row of bonus carrots. They haven't had much light in there, so when we thin out that chard, they'll get a bit more of a look in. Then the annual courgette plant. You really only need one or two of these and you're good. Then our last triangle, row of spring onions in the back here. These are lovely spring onions. They're kind of a little bit more bulby on the end there than normal straight ones. And we've been getting through those and then a row of all year round lettuce there, which we can probably thin out and replant. Then, I mean, this is seriously tight planting, but you can get away with this when you're in this sort of no dig raised bed environment where you can be a bit more intensive. Uh, these are a bit tight. Uh, row of carrots there. But you've got to remember that carrots are much slower to grow, that this harvest of lettuce will be long gone before this is even halfway through. So a bit like when we plant radish in between all of our uh, radish and other uh, quick growing crops in between our rows of root veg, they're in and out before they cause an issue. So spinach and radish are, are perfect for that. Then we're into a row of beets. And I mean, they've grown like rockets. They're pretty speedy, actually. They've only been in about four or five weeks and they're already the sort of size you would use whole i'll probably let a lot of them go bigger we use them for a nice beetroot and apple chutney and then this is just our radish graveyard where everything's gone to seed this is all coming out and this is where we're going to be planting more lettuce and some other veg today and you can see there the remnants of our attempt at some kale and uh, purple sprouting in the other bed and the pigeons that just got to it too quick and i don't really want to have to net everything which becomes a bit of an eyesore. Which brings us to our little bonus bed that we put in the back here. And this had Eden's row of cabbage, but as you can see, those beautiful little butterflies flew in and dropped a caterpillar bomb. And 
I mean, we harvested some of the outside young leaves, but we're, they're right in there now, and it's just a, a lost cause. Um, this bed, we could probably get away with netting and it not looking too ugly. So next year, perhaps we'll do a netted uh, bed along here. But you start netting them at this point, all you're doing is just creating a, a secure caterpillar farm because right, you're trapping them in. And then behind that, we've just got our um, little row of French beans. The purple ones, these ones. In amongst which are the girls' sunflowers. There's a load of those, and actually we've done it in a way that some of the beans are actually growing up those. And a quick look in the polytunnel. Uh, we didn't go full out on the polytunnel this year because we've still got stuff in here and it was a bit of a last minute uh, addition. So there's, um, I don't know, eight or 10 tomato plants in here, a cucumber and some peppers. So what happens happens, but of course, when you're dealing with polytunnel or a greenhouse, then you've got to deal with watering. So you go away um, or you forget for a day, like I have here, well not forget, but just didn't go around to it. And uh, we've got a few bits shriveling up. So definitely need a water now, but that is one thing. You can just about get away with outside, you know, randomly watering when, as and when, if the weather's not too dry, whereas in here, it can be belting it down outside and you've still got to come out in the rain and water, unless you've got some sort of irrigation system. I've done lots of videos in the past on growing tomatoes and I'm not gonna revisit all that now, but we usually grow them on uh, string, twine, or, or um, kind of baling twine or whatever, and it just saves having bamboo sticks and all that jazz to mess around with. We just simply give them a twist every now and then and they self-support. The only real thing, Apart from keeping up with watering is to deal with uh, just pinching out and you can you I mean like I said I've done this in lots of videos but as soon as you've got your horizontal uh, kind of leaf leafy part coming out as soon as you see this one coming up at 45 degrees that's trying to make a new plant and we don't have a long enough season to start creating a giant tomato tree so all those get pinched out and that just sends more energy and goodness into the trusses to give us what we want, which is tomatoes ripe before the end of the year, rather than a load of green tomato pickle, which normally is where we end up if we don't get things done on time. Quick look at other projects. There's a picket gate video to come soon. Just got to fix the latch on there. This is our eggy lane, which is a bird free lane where the girls come up and collect the eggs in here. Have got any eggs today? Oh yeah. All four of our brown egg layers lay super early in the morning. You ready to catch? One, two, three. <laughs> right, I promise you some project updates for those of you who are not vegetable minded. So here you go. Our concrete slab is becoming very useful as far as doing projects already. I've just been building up these uh, display units for my cousin. Uh, she's got a stand, a stool at Wilderness Festival and she needed a load of simple knockdown furniture to display products so uh, we've just gone for osb here and i've talked about it in instagram but basically really simple no tools needed design then just working on some frontage for their stool as well i've also been busy building these gates as a pair of pretty heavy juicy gates which are going to be replacing this old horrible eyesore and that will keep things a bit more secure as well and I need to chop out this section of concrete wall here. That's this morning's job. As you can see, I'm just about in the shade still here. When this line creeps across, it's not going to be fun today. Anyway, that'll be a video to come. There's going to be two gate videos, the pair of pedestrian gates up there, the picket gate down the bottom, and a few other little bits around those. Also been working on a giant pegboard project. We're in the garage conversion now. And uh, as you know, weather got nice and I neglected this. Do you know what, the amount of insulation we put in here is lovely and cool in here during the day. So if I was sensible about it, this is what I should be doing. I've got a load of tiling to do and some flooring. But this is what I want to share now. This is my latest purchase. What a slab. So I picked up this two meter slab of elm and it's uh, about 900, nearly a meter wide as well and oh, it's just a beauty. It's pretty thick, nice natural live edge on the front there 
and it is going to be the ultimate centerpiece to the office. I'm going to build myself the uh, the ultimate editing desk from this for work and for YouTube. And I mean, it's bearing in mind it's Elm, it's got to be pretty old as it is. I mean, it's bone dry as well. But you can see down there, I don't know if it's going to take that much to flatten that off. That looks pretty, pretty straight to me. Uh, but we won't know until we get it up on the workbench. And you come in a bit close, you can see all the sawmill marks there, which are going to need to be worked on. We're not going to get this through the thicknesser. Um, but we'll probably see if we can build a router sled to, to flatten off the, the whole thing. And then we will just go at it until it's silky smooth. Uh, and it's got some nice grain in it. It's really hard to tell when it's so rough sawn like this. And it's kind of one of the magical things about woodworking. But until we get past all those bandsaw marks, we really won't know. But I'm, something tells me this is going to be an absolute beauty when it's all said and done. But as you can see, it's a beauty of a day and set to be hottest day of the year, I believe. Which if you're like me and you get sunburnt in mid-December, is not a good look so i'm gonna see if i can get a little bit done in the shade now and then we'll move inside on that tiling and then if needs be i'll just retreat into the cellar and sit in the corner in my pants <laughs> no i won't i won't do that uh anyway there we go i hope you enjoyed that little look around the garden farm or the vegetable garden and um if you've got any questions on that then do let me know it's kind of a work in progress down there we've We've sectioned off that section of the garden, as some of you know, and we call it the garden farm. And we do strive to kind of do what we can in that little space. There's extra space once I cleared that where that shed and stuff like that. We can get another two big beds in there. And of course, we've done the chickens earlier in the year, the, the meat chickens, and we've got the chickens that we have for our eggs. So it is it's kind of good what you can get done in a little, little space like that. But it does take a little bit of work. But if it's something you enjoy, then hey, it's just a hobby that feeds you. If you want to check out more of the food it yourself videos, we've got an old playlist. Some of the videos there are a little bit less polished than today's uh, style, but there's some stuff there you might want to look through. If you want to see more of the food it yourself type stuff, uh, whether it's growing, whether it's cooking, um, then let us know because I'm happy to put together a few more videos like that. Uh, my background years ago was uh, a chef in restaurants and we've done some stuff in the kitchen but it'd be quite cool to do a little bit more of that and make it either a one-off type thing or a regular feature but anyway i'll leave it up to you let us know what you think but that's it thanks for watching i'm gonna go and melt but remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time